Hi everyone, this video describes how to set up an Adaptronic Modular ECU. First, it's important to understand that getting the initial setup right gets you most of the way there. The better the initial settings are, the easier the tune and setup will go. The first step is to download the Eugene software. This is available from the Adaptronic website. If you're using a plug and play ECU, the best way is to start off with a base map for that engine. These are available in the base maps directory after you've installed the software. Sometimes the same ECU will have multiple base maps. For example, the Skyline ECU has a base map for the RB25 GTST, the RB26 GTR, and the VG3300 ZX. If you're using a wiring ECU like the M2000 or the M6000, there may also be a base map in the Adaptronic base maps directory. If not, the tech support guys may be able to make one. Otherwise, if there's no base map available, then you'll need to start with a generic map and then set up all the particulars for your engine. Step one is to load the base map or load a generic base map if you're making one from scratch. If you're setting up a different engine, then you'll need to set up all the differences for that engine, so read on. Step two is to change anything in the base map that's different between your engine and in the factory installation. So this may include, but it's certainly not limited to, the engine capacity, for example, if you've bored out the engine, injector type, fuel pressure, whether or not you're running a fuel pressure sensor, air temperature sensor, oil temperature sensor, or any other sensors that you may have added to the engine. Stoichiometric ratio, for example, 14.7 for petrol or gasoline or 10.0 for E85. And the target idle speed. So if you've got aftermarket cans or you've got much larger inlet ports, you may need it to idle at a slightly higher RPM. Also, any other outputs that you've changed or have added on for another purpose. There are other articles to explain how to do this in more detail. Step three is to go to the wiring page on the home ribbon and then update any changes that you've made to the comments on the pins. So for example, if you're using a plug and play ECU on a race car, and the, the race car doesn't have air conditioning and using that digital input as a pit lane speed limiter instead, then you should change that in the wiring description page. It's simply good manners because then someone who maybe you at a later date can read it and see what it actually does. Okay, now you have a functional base map for the engine. Make a new folder within the My Documents folder for this car that you're doing and give the file a sensible name like Fully Sick Car 001. If you've been doing this with the ECU connected, then all this will already be updated to the ECU. But if you've been doing it offline, then now connect the ECU to the software and then reload the map and confirm that you're going to overwrite the ECU with that map. You don't need the ECU to be wired into the car or to be given 12 volts to be able to write the ECU settings. So step five, now it's time to either wire up the ECU or to make any changes to the factory loom based on additional sensors or outputs that you're going to change. You can use the information that you added into the wiring screen as a guide. Step six, once it's wired up, you can now apply power to the ECU. Normally at this point, I check all the analog inputs are reading correctly. So for example, all the temperature sensors and pressure sensors. Assuming that they're all correct, you can now calibrate the throttle position sensor. To do this, you hold the throttle closed, click on the learn 0% figure, then open the throttle all the way and click on the learn 100% figure. Just be aware that on some cars, like the RX-7s, a wax pellet actually holds the throttle open when the engine's cold, so you'll need to do this again when the engine's hot. Step 7. Knowing that the inputs are OK, it's now time to check the outputs. I normally do this by going into the auxiliary outputs and inverting each one in turn, making sure I can at least hear a click from the engine bay or the thermofans turn on or the fuel pump turns on or whatever it's supposed to do. I also recommend checking the injector outputs by pulsing each one and verifying that you get a similar waveform for each injector and also pulsing each ignition output and making sure that you at least get a click from each ignition output channel. If everything so far is good, then you can attempt to start the engine. If the trigger is set up correctly, then the engine should start pretty easily, especially with correct fuel pressure settings and injector selection. If it doesn't, then you should check the triggering setup and ignition before going any further. By this I mean if it doesn't start, then you shouldn't be continuing to throw fuel into the engine and potentially setting fire to it at the wrong time. This can cause all sorts of problems like big exhaust backfires. I've even seen it knock starter motors off engines before. I've even heard of one situation where it caused a timing chain to skip a few teeth and have a valve piston collision. So in that case, either disable the injectors or unplug them or disable the fuel pump output. Yeah, well, log the RPM. The RPM should be stable and correct during cranking. If not, then you should use the built-in scope to watch the current engine angle, the RPM and the trigger inputs while the engine's cranking. The current engine angle should be a stepped waveform that goes from minus 360 degrees to plus 360 degrees and then back down to minus 360 again. If you see multiple jumps in this stepped waveform, 
then it means that either the wrong trigger mode has been selected or there's a bad signal. If the current engine angle is increasing but the RPM is always showing 1, then it means that the ECU doesn't know where top dead centre is, which could mean that it hasn't seen a missing tooth or it hasn't seen the cam or the crank single tooth reset. If the current engine angle is advancing correctly and you have good RPM, then the ignition timing should also be stable, so you can verify that on the engine and adjust the base angle in the trigger settings to get it correct. If it's still backfiring or not starting up, then check the firing order in the ignition output section. If the ignition system is all working correctly, then it should at least start up on error start or brake cleaner. Once you've done all that, you can now get on to tuning. Thank you very much.